shortly after the formation of the intraembryonic mesoderm. The embryo folds laterally and anteroposteriorly in order to reduce the size of the gut formed from the yolk sac and also to place the intraembryonic coelom ventrally. Embryo folding. The flat trilaminar embryonic disc progressively increases in size and undergoes folding to be transformed into a cylindrical structure. Embryo folding takes place in two planes, longitudinal folding and transverse folding. These foldings take place in a vertical direction during longitudinal folding. A hair fold and a tail fold are formed. As a hair fold forms, part of the yolk sac is incorporated into the embryo from the primitive foregut. This primitive foregut is separated from the stomatodium by the oropharyngeal membrane, the cardiogenic area together with the primitive heart tubes and the septum transversum. They come to lie ventral to the primitive foregut with the septum transversum lying caudal to the primitive heart. The septum transversum takes part in the formation of a diaphragm. As the tail fold forms, part of the secondary yolk sac is incorporated into the embryo as a primitive hindgut. This primitive hindgut is separated from the clocker by the clocker membrane. During transverse folding, part of the secondary yolk sac is also incorporated into the embryo as the primitive hindgut. This primitive hindgut is separated from the clocker by the clocker membrane during transverse folding. Part of the secondary yolk sac is also incorporated into the embryo as a primitive midgut. And as this primitive midgut forms, it becomes attached to the dorsal aspect of embryo by the dorsal mesentery. As a result of a transverse and longitudinal folding, the embryo becomes attached ventrally with the remains of the secondary yolk sac. The yolk sac and the collagen stalk all are formed and they lie close and ventral. Together they take part in the formation of the umbilical cord.